So today we're going to be talking about a director that you might have never heard of, and that is Russian director Andrei Zvigenstev. Now, prior to watching his films, I'd heard a lot of comparisons to Andrei Tarkovsky, which I can see to an extent. I will say Andrei Tarkovsky is a little more methodical than uh, Andrei Zvigenstev, but Andrei Zvigenstev is honestly probably one of my favorite working directors to date. Uh, he has five feature-length films. He has a sixth feature-length film, uh, I believe, either being filmed soon or coming out. Uh, it's, I believe it's going to be an American film, his first ever American film, which I think is fitting because while he does exceed, you know, filming in his own home country, I feel like his directing style is just perfect for so many other stories and uh, I just, I, I think it's best that he spreads his wings, if that makes sense, because he is a very talented director. I want to see what he can do with uh, multiple genres, uh, you know, just different things. Um, and you see that a lot with directors like Wong Kar, Wong Kar Wai um, and other filmmakers, I'm sure there's more uh, that I can't think of off the top of my head. Uh, but I want to talk about his five films, do a little ranking for those films, just a little tiny ranking, um, and, and sort of discuss Andres Vigenstev and what his style is and why his films uh, impacted me in a big way because he's been a very big inspiration to me as well. Uh, like I said, I think he's one of the best working directors out there. The five films that he's done uh, is Alina, The Banishment, uh, Leviathan, uh, let's see, I have the, uh, the Return and Loveless, which uh, are all fantastic films. I mean, they're, they're all really, really good. So when I do a ranking for these, uh, I guess you could say a top five per se, uh, it's more so just ranking uh, the greatest to the fucking best, great, greatest, great, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but his style is very cold. He's very, he's a very cold director. He is somebody that, uh, I feel like in a sense, he does put the characters first, which you do see a healthy amount in films. You know, of course there are a lot of directors that put the story and the characters first. I would say a majority of directors do that. They, they, they sort of try to even things out. But Andres Vigenstev is more so somebody that presents a story and it's like, okay, this is what this film is about and just focuses on the characters. And, and, and I feel like that right there is what makes him stand out uh, compared to a lot of other working filmmakers, directors today. Uh, and his cinematography is also really good. I love cinemat the cinematography in Andrei's Vigenstead films. There's just something about Russian films, the, the Russian landscape, uh, you know, the urban areas. Uh, they're just, Russia's I, a very fascinating country to me, uh, regardless of what's going on in the world. I'm just, you know, talking about, uh, you, you know, cinematic wise. Uh, but, but a lot of my favorite films have come out of the, either the Soviet Union or modern day Russia. Um, their just style of filmmaking is so real and uh, visceral. Uh, I just, I don't know, I just, I really enjoy Russian films. But Zvigenstev, but Zvigenstev, he really, really does get the most out of his character development. And it is somewhat impressive to see a big group of characters in a film be fleshed out the way that they are in a film that may be, you know, 90 minutes up to two and a half hours. Uh, especially even supporting characters or characters that don't really have that big of a role. Um, but in all of his films, do sort of center around this whole premise of family. Uh, his films are very centered around family, family dynamic, family affairs, uh, you know, just the, the monotonous family life, I guess you could say, um, just for the sake of his films, you know, just, just his films, you know, it's more so just a scenario that's conceptualized just, you know, for that narrative. Um, but yeah, that, not saying that family's monotonous, but it sometimes can be. But let's go ahead and rank these films. Let's go ahead and do it. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about, the, I just think it's the best way to talk about these films individually is to just do a ranking. I debated on doing it. I figured I would just go in chronological order because I do love my rankings. 
but there are only like five films. But then I realized the why I love Todd Field video. I did sort of do a ranking for those, so I should just do a ranking for this. Coming in at number five is Alina. Now, this film is interesting to me because it is the first Andres Vegan Stev film that I ever seen. Um, it was my introduction into Vegan, Vegan Stev, and it was good enough for me to continue on his filmography. I mean, it gripped me. Uh, it does follow a lot with Inheritance um, and sort of, you know, it's, it's been a while since I've seen it, but it, it, when it comes to the story, it is just a... I wouldn't necessarily say it's weaker than his other stories. It's just more so a lot more contained than his other films. And his other films are just more so so vast that it's just sort of weird to see a more contained Svigan Stev film. But nonetheless, it's, a, it's still a really good film. And honestly, if you're wanting to get into his filmography, which I would highly recommend it, you know, because he only has five films, I would say that this would be the one to start out with because it is... Like I say, I think it's a very accessible film. I would even argue that it is more accessible than probably another one of his films on this list that uh, is higher up on this list at number three. But I just feel like it's a little too contained to be above any of his other films. And it's very simple, you know. It's, it's just more so after watching it, I didn't really think too much on it. Uh, compared to his other four films, but Alina's still a solid film. Coming in at number four, we have The Return. Uh, I would actually highly recommend looking into the uh, sort of the behind the scenes for the film. It is sort of tragic, um, but this film sort of centers around a father that's not been in their kids, uh, his kids' lives for a pretty long time, um, which, you know, is something that I can actually relate to. So I guess that's kind of why, you know, I might be a little bit biased with this film. Although I really don't think so because I know a lot of people do have it higher up on their list. But I really could relate to this film, you know, just personally. And uh, their father, you know, coming into their lives late and he's really teaching them how to be, uh, you know, a man, basically. That's sort of what he's doing. And he's very harsh about it. He's very... Uh, but there is sort of this level of love that you can tell uh, and affection for his children. I'm not going to spoil it, but it really did throw me off guard. Like I said, Zvigan Stev is a very cold person. He's a very cold individual whenever it comes to his filmmaking. Um, and there's a nice, there's something to take away from the film. Uh, it is one of those films where you want to sit down and watch it all the way through just because I feel like you're going to get the most out of that. It's got some pretty tense scenes. Um, it's it's a solid film. It really is. It's a, it's a great directorial debut for sure. Coming in at number three, and this is usually at the bottom of Vegan Stev's films uh, that I've noticed for, you know, rankings and such. Although I don't think I've ever seen a Vegan Stev ranked on YouTube. This might be really the first one I've never... Well, no, there. I think I have seen some, but I don't think there were any talking in them. But number three is The Banishment. Now, The Banishment, while it is a little bit slow, it has the same, I forget, I don't even know how to pronounce the lead character's name, so I'm not, but it's the same guy from The, uh, from the Return. Um, and essentially, this film is about, uh, you know, this, this, this guy and his wife and their kids, uh, you know, they're out in the secluded cabin out in the woods, and he figures out that his wife got pregnant from another man. And you sort of get to see the dynamic carry on from there. Again, I'm not going to spoil it because these films are very spoilery. Uh, but this film in particular has some of the best cinematography I think I've ever seen. And there's one shot in particular that's probably, I'm not even just saying this. I know it's going to sound extreme, but it's probably like the most beautiful shot I've ever seen in cinematic history. I'm not kidding. It's good. Um, and yeah, the cinematography is just so good. It's so, this film is a lot slower than his other films. I would probably argue this is probably his slowest film, but it's so damn pretty to look at. You know, it's just, it's so, um, it's just, it, it's so easy on the eyes. Um, and, and the way the story, while it does sort of start off a little slow, it does pick up towards that second half and, uh, just does a really good job in terms of storytelling for sure. Coming in at number two, uh, this is this is a really good film, Leviathan. Now, Leviathan is about a family that's staying in this house, and uh, well, they live in this house, and essentially the city's trying to take it away from them. Uh, the main guy, I guess you could say he is the main guy in the film. Um, he, I believe it's his brother that's his lawyer. I think it's his brother. I'm pretty sure it's his brother. Uh, and I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to spoil what happens in it. 
but this film does have a lot of twists and turns there you know the one thing that Zvigan Stev does really good when it comes to his storytelling is he does a lot of in-camera storytelling where he'll hold on a shot and then something will happen and it's so jarring that it sort of explains like 50 different things in one shot and it just it's so good the way that his stuff is filmed and the way that it's presented it's uh it's very smart this film is, is again cinematography wise it's beautiful but i will say it has a very uh it's it's a very vague ending it's not one of those endings that you're going to get everything out of it but it definitely 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 does sort of give you something to chew on and it gives you enough to where you can sort of come up with your own theory and hypothesis of, you know, kind of what happened in the film and what, you know, what really occurred. And I think that's sort of the fun of it. I'm actually glad that you don't get to figure out everything because I really do enjoy the theory that I've come up with myself for the film. So I feel like I was able to take away a lot from the story. And I think that's probably why this is so high up on the list. And coming in at number one, this is not only Andres Vigenstev's best film, but this is probably one of the best films I've ever seen, ever. I mean, I'm dead serious. This is probably one of the best films I've ever seen. Um, and this is his most recent film, Loveless. Loveless is everything that I love about Zvigen Stev rolled into one. Um, honestly, he could call it quits with his filmography, and this would be, I think, a crowning achievement. I think this is a film that everybody should watch. This is probably one of the few films that I would actually agree with. I, and I'm not, I am not for dubbing. I am not for dubbing whatsoever. I am completely against it. But the fact of the matter is a lot of people do, especially when it comes to Americans, a lot of people do not like reading subtitles. They don't. I mean, it's just kind of how it is. I think it's, I think it's blasphemous to watch dub, dubbed films, but I just feel like this is one of those films that everybody should watch, which is why if I ever hear of somebody watching, like for instance, Squid Games, I know a lot of people watch that dubbed. And as much as it bothers me, at least people watched it. I'm pretty sure Parasite had a dubbed version too. And that's again, one of those films where it's like, okay, at least you watched it, I suppose. But Again, this is another one of those films where, and I believe this film is Parasite level. I do, if not better. I mean, I just think that this is a film that everybody should watch. And honestly, if there is a dubbed version, which there could be, watch it. Seriously, watch it. Look, I mean, as long as you don't tell me, I can't judge you about it. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's a, an amazing film. It has probably one of the most depressing, gut-wrenching sort of climax I've ever seen. It's it's a hard film to watch. It really is, and it doesn't pull any punch. I mean, it what I mean, it pulls the punches. That's for damn sure. But it is just Zvigan Stev at his peak. I mean, it is Zvigan Stev at I think his best. If he makes something better than this film, if there's any film from this list, I would highly recommend watching Loveless. It is it is a absolute masterpiece, and it's what movies are all about. I'm telling you. But that's Andres Vigenstev. I'm glad I got to talk to uh, talk about him a little bit. Uh, as you guys know, I am getting really close to filming. I'm gonna come. I'm, I'm gonna record a couple more videos uh, beforehand. Uh, I would like to at least maybe get three or four out. Uh, actually, I probably will do a video about uh, Asteroid City. Maybe I'll do an Indiana Jones ranked. Um, and I would also like to do, uh, and of course, what I watched in June. But I'm actually really thinking about making a video about Half Life Three. I, I, I don't talk about gaming much on this channel, but I really wanted to. I really wanted to. I've actually been playing, uh, well, with the time, the little time that I've had. Uh, I've been checking out the uh, Entropy Zero games. Uh, if you have Steam, I would highly recommend checking them out. It's almost like playing a new Half-Life game. Uh, they're so good, but I, this has nothing to do with vegan stuff or movies, but I wanted to talk about it and maybe I'll just make a video about Half-Life 3 because I can. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up, maybe subscribe. If you've seen Andre's vegan stuff, definitely leave in the com uh, comments below what your favorite films are by him without spoiling anything. Uh, but anyway, guys, stay safe out there and I'll see you guys next time.